Whoa. Kamish is on the stage. The anticipation is ripe. The building is raucous. <laughs> We're ready to get this thing underway. <laughs> hey. Hey, you don't say that. <laughs> And with the first pick of the 2018 Mock It Up Before You Fock It Up, Big Co. drafting for the Easton Assassins selects Saquon Barkley. Had to. Easy pick. Couldn't wait for it. Doesn't um, even matter who you're drafting for. I could touch on some of this guy's team. He passed I'll, us the draft card right when he walked in. The draft card was made out, laminated weeks in advance. Saquon Barkley, don't get too cute. We said that weeks ago on the podcast here. Um, this dude's got Zeke on his team. He's got Joe Mixon on his team. Not much for receiver. Got pretty heavy on the tight ends. Got a solid quarterback if Andrew Luck gets back to throwing weighted footballs again. Whoa, he's got Andy Dalton. <laughs> exactly. He's got he's got insurance. <laughs> well, I thought that's where you were going when you said he had a solid quarterback. <laughs> well, this is a got, one QB league. He's got so. a potential Hall of Famer in Andrew Luck if he can ever get back on the football field. But, again, it has nothing to do. If you're stacked at running back and you're sitting at the 1-1, you take Saquon and you become even more stacked at running back. Right. You you, know? ne- you can never be too stacked at running back. Absolutely not. No, that 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 ship sails quickly. Yeah, exactly. real quick. Yeah, uh, it, things can happen quickly with your injuries. If you think you have three good running backs and you can only start two, don't get weighted down on the bench there and ship one off for no reason. Just hang out and just ride it. If you if you're good at running back, you're going to be in the playoffs most likely. I mean, if you can build any semblance of running back mattering of the team run, around running him. backs win championships and fantasy some football. catches. You know, I've been in plenty of situations where you left one season at the end of a season coming into another season where you think, you know, your running back core is set and you got some picks and you drafted a running back and then you get into the season and all of a sudden by week three, you're, you know, scrounging around for a second running back to start. Yeah, it happens quickly. An ACL there, or a hammy here. And just, you know, somebody for a whatever reason. over yeah, there. Yeah, just <laughs> a little all puff, sorts puff of things. Here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. A little PED, you never know. You can't so, be too stacked. I hate when I hear people say, oh, well, I'm really good at running back, so I uh, need a wide receiver. Like, maybe you should just get a running back. Like, Well, I mean, I can I can see it when you get a little later in the process here, but um, especially with Saquon Barkley and, and the prospect that is. Right. Um, There's just, a solid prospect. Right. You solid got, player on the board. You got to take that running you back. You got to pull the trigger. And, and then the Giants go ahead and, and back up their, you know, second pick, which some people are upset that you take Saquon with the first pick. You know, we'll have a whole show about, or at least this long <laughs> why, segment of a show about why, whether, it's, worth why it. it's ridiculous or not ridiculous to draft a running back in the top five or however, whatever number you want to go with first round, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Not a not an argument for uh, today's show. For today's show, but so they draft Will Hernandez uh, with the with their second pick, who's thirty fourth overall. Who's a mauler? Could have easily gone mid to late first round. Sure, he was the the second best guard on the board. A lot of people were saying outside of Quentin Nelson. Um, mauler in the run game, like you're mauler saying. in the run game. Good, good, great pick for Saquon. Hopefully, he pans out. It's an offensive lineman, just like great any other prospect Giants. in the draft. You never know if they're actually going to pan out. An offensive lineman or one of those ones that you don't really know, but he's a big dude, and he's stout in the run game. Right, and it's a huge area of need for the Giants. The Giants didn't have good run blocking or pass blocking last year. so Graded it, out as a 26th best line per PFF. Which there ain't a whole lot more teams than 26, so Gave they're pretty they're, – they're at the back. 180 pressures. Yeah, and so in the Saquon pick, you got the generational talent running back, and, you know – I did see a tweet where one some guy goes, "Can you have a generational talent come out every, every year?" Every year, yeah. And you know what? It's up. I mean, maybe we've had them for a couple of years in a row, and I got no problem with it. So I'm not going to hold well, that. Before that was a I've generational. Got, I'm not going to hold that against Saquon Barkley. So that he helps Eli, he helps the wide receivers, he helps the defense, he helps the O line, he helps. He, I right. think he'll help the Giants win some games. And the and Giants helped their own O line. They, they they went and picked up agency. Nate Solder from the Patriots. Diligence. And yeah, they, uh, it was a huge pickup. Then they then they went right back and drafted a a, a, a hopefully good left guard, plug and play starter at either left guard or right guard. They picked up um, Patrick. Uh, I, I struggle with this one. The offensive lineman last names. Are yeah, the they are the toughest. <laughs> Omame. That's Patrick a decent, Omame. Decent shot. So that, that's the best I got. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. He he's don't from, add him. He's from the Jaguars. He's 
he started. Uh, he's played with some left guard, but he started his career uh, playing right guard. So he can. The Giants said they're not sure which where they're going to plug Hernandez in yet. They should probably just pick a side of the line that Solder's on and put Hernandez exactly. next to him and just get mm-hmm. one solid side. Right. Um, they tendered uh, Brett Jones the center, um, like the gonna, Vikings used to do a bring him years back. Ago. They'd run behind that left sure. tackle, left guard all day long. But the right side of this line could be a little, a little, a little dicey. We'll see what happens there. They still Eric got, Flowers yeah, may or may not yeah. play. Well, if they're a little dicey, that's way better than last year. Right. Well, last and, year they and, were a lot dicey. And you, you know, one of the best players in the league whether you like him or not odell missed a good portion of the season sure. right and, and you can't key on key in on saquon right you can't just pick him to stop yeah right? you got to stop odell given that they keep him which it sounds like it looks like that's happening right and saquon's no stranger to a bad offensive line either right and you, i mean last year you knew, points, you knew the Jerry. giants couldn't effectively really run it at you too too much and you weren't really worried about too many weapons around you you had evan ingram who was a rookie who played well but Still a rookie tight end, and and you had Sterling Shepard who who played great as well. I like Sterling Shepard as much as the next guy, but then they had a bunch of Jamokes playing every other wide receiver position possible. No doubt, there. especially when especially when Odell went down. So, right, that's what I'm saying. Right. So, but you bring back, you get your, you get Odell back, and the Giants did a good job not trading him away. So you got Odell, you got the. He is second, saying he might sit right now, but well, the, well off season semantics here. We'll see what happens. I can't blame him to sit until I get paid either. Um, especially after that injury. But so you got your second year tight end who obviously proved himself as a playmaker last year. And then you got Sterling Shepard and now you bring in Saquon. So you, you have, you have weapons. You can, you know, you, you have ways to stretch the defense out. So things get easier for Eli and and I'm not going to sit here and take up for Eli. And you have somebody will say that his worst season always followed by his best season. And that's happened like four or five years in a row. So expect him to break back out. I don't expect Eli Manning to break back out, I don't but think I the Giants him, need him to, I expect him to definitely level out. Right. And because with all those weapons, things get so much easier and they all work together. It'll be a lot. Everything they do just on balance offense out year, a little more. Exactly. I was about to say, they're just comp all those pieces. When they, when you put them together and you let them complement each other, Saquon's awesome already. Odell's awesome already you know you spent um, all this money on the defense two years ago and then it panned out for you and then it was kind of fell apart a little bit last year yeah so because quit. guess what yeah th- they didn't want to play over there your offense can hardly do anything they played at home but yeah they didn't play on the road your run game right your run game was you didn't even try half the time sure you didn't stick with it so now you know you got a guy who you can rely on you can hand it to or throw it to however many times you want a game you can lean on this guy and then right you know like jay wayne said at the beginning of the uh kickoff here with saquon it's gonna be really tough you got to pick somebody to stop or just kind of spread out if and, you middle and, ground it i just think it's great right. I'm, I'm, I'm excited open. for the giants i mean i'm right. not necessarily just pulling for them each and every week but i'm excited for the giants and i hope with all the hate they got thrown out I like there Pat for Shermer. Yeah, I, I hope that they come out and do well and and that Saquon does awesome. I really do. I, I hope that it, you know, proves that some naysayers wrong with the whole early pick thing. Yeah, now that smug face uh what was the old coach? <laughs> old smuggest face in the Oh, the offensive the coordinator turned no, the, coach. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even. I can't his even. Name. This is how forgettable That's he how was. That's how bad he was. Point. Just forget oh, about it. Oh, good deal. Well, we could we could continue talking about the Giants and the situation and the draft pick, but for this discussion, it doesn't even matter because it didn't matter where Saquon was going. He's number one pre-draft, number one post-draft for your rookie draft anyway. And right. I mean, that's just he's how gonna it help, is. He's going to help your team immediately and, right. and be super. Like this is what you hope for when you're the one one coming around of how quickly your team could be turned around just from this draft pick. Captain Obvious, you're not not taking Saquon. Right. You're not not right. taking him. If you do, if you don't take him, you're an idiot. You dumb up. The only thing that you could do is potentially trade him the opportunity for somebody to trade that you could trade him, but you can't make another pick. Right. You can trade the one right. one for basically anything you want. Better get a lot. You can get anything you want for the one one. Like comparable. You could somebody might give you Zeke, somebody might give you Bell, somebody might give you D. DJ, John, DJ, DJ, David Johnson, or or very very close to that, but you cannot not take Saquon. You either right. take him or trade that pick for somebody the, else's the, best the shore, player. A sure stud, and it's yeah. just you know, take another second here, and it's just like a guy like Ezekiel Elliott when he came in will turn the course of your franchise around and take you from being the worst team to if you can like we led the top of the broadcast off with if you can put any semblance of any sort of team around him yes you can you, you will get to the playoffs and hope maybe even win the championship it happened in this league yep. the guy got Zeke uh, he, Kenny Britt played well for him and he had Jordy Nelson playing well for him yep. and, and he, Lev Bell and he had Le'Veon Bell 
coming off the season before that and got those two guys together and has an awful team now, still has an awful team. Yeah. He traded Ezekiel Elliott away, away later, but he still got to the, the two championship. Two years ago when he had and won. Zeke first overall, it took him to a championship. So yeah, that's two, just if you could if you could find your way into having two stud backs on a team and you can find rod receivers that will catch the ball, you'll be fine. Saquon's who you're looking for at one one. I mean yep. just in any draft. Good to go. Well, yeah. Done. Well, that was a convenient time for that draft sound because we were done anyway. But the, the pick's in. <laughs> Jay Wayne, who you got? You're on the clock. Well, I got one, two, and I'm, I'm going Geis. Going He's, Geis. No slide here. No way, man. Big slide for him in the NFL draft. Seventh running back off the board. I was like, whoa, what is happening here? I didn't even know everything that was going on. We had to discuss it, had to look it up, had to figure out, like reading into it. Teams were saying he has immaturity issues, they're concerned over how his, he handles his emotions. They called him high maintenance. They suspect he's gay. They say he'll need mentorship and structure <laughs> and it, to help him out as a pro. I'm not sure Washington is the best place for that, but I don't really care. I don't care. Right. Sure. Um, you and, don't think Washington's the best place because of just the way their organization is run? Right. right. Which, which so, <laughs> so apparently, some more about Geis and why he slid, right? Apparently TMZ had some embar embarrassing story about him. They came out and denied that. Um, he he fired his agent through this whole process. He went on Sirius XML or XM NFL radio and said that teams were asking him if he liked men and if his mother was a prostitute. The NFL denied these claims. Ultimately, guys came out and and said he lied because the NFL was going to basically blackball him if he didn't say he was going to if he didn't say he was lying. And like we're not here to necessarily speculate on the intent or appropriateness of questions that's not really what i'm here to do i have no doubt in my own opinion that those questions were asked and right they just want to gauge his reaction let's not pretend the nfl doesn't have all the money and when you have all the money and you pretty much could do nothing wrong right you, you get to do basically whatever you whatever want that's you just want. the way this you world do works. it and it's wrong and then you know it's wrong and then you just cover it and up. then you, you say no we, did, we didn't do that no first way. of all who you cares? make him look like the idiot but who cares right. if who cares if he's gay and if they asked him about it shame on them but then like casey's saying big big nfl guy comes in here is like you know what uh we don't like that you told people about this stuff and we're going to cover it up and you're going to go out there and say you lied or either we're going to you're going to you know we're going he inevitably even though he came out and said he lied which he probably didn't lie that he like you said he probably no got asked those questions he still slid down the draft board far enough to cost him millions of dollars already right yep. his first contract just got significantly worse oh yeah on that slide and right. I, I don't think he lied about that but then they they got him in the building and they were asking you know the redskins building first day in they were interviewing him and, and they were like you know do you regret anything you did would you change anything uh, you know how do you feel about the draft and he was like oh i wouldn't change anything i'm just happy to be and then he lied he said i'm happy to be working for a great organization with great owners and i was like ah oh, maybe he did lie i don't know <laughs> he's lying right now <laughs> we know he's lying not, now. not good for your no case here buddy yeah, yeah. i was gonna but, defend you but <laughs> i mean like like you said we're not here to speculate about what may have been said or or, or not asked or any right, of that stuff right. but like i mean judging from where this kid came from and how he how he got to where he he got like if you're gonna ask that dude these questions i mean you might should expect to maybe him get grab, a real him, answer. He might grab you by the throat. Right. right. About to get a real answer. He should have. Have he you didn't. seen him play football? He's about to, he right. might grab you by the throat. He's about right. to keep it real. But he right. didn't. He didn't He didn't do any of that. He keeps you know? it real. And I don't care. Maybe don't... he did, and that's what they're upset about. Right. Yeah. So my guy, they're like, oh, well, they're, psycho, they're psychoanalyzing him, and, and he should just know to keep it. Like, come on, man. This yeah. is a young kid. Maybe You're asking you, him these ridiculous questions. Maybe right. you ask him if his mom is a, is a hooker. And he grabbed right. you by the throat. Yeah. Right. And you're like, you should. you're lucky right. he just drop you right there. <laughs> right. That's what I would want. I want you to, shh, don't talk about my mom. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and, like I you mean, said, have you seen me run? Speculation. But <laughs> right. Any, and I don't care about any of this. Right. Me I don't either. care about any of this. It so, doesn't change anything the, right. for me. So you obviously just picked him at the one, two. I'm going one, two. I mean, this kid has come so far in life. The neighborhood he grew up in, and you alluded to it, was literally named The Bottom. Like, from the bottom to the top. That's where Geis has come. Like, his dad was murdered at the age five. So, like, for him to make it this far, and he's never been in any kind of trouble. He's never been in any legal trouble. He's never been arrested. Like, the high school coach came out and said after the draft that he's, he never had any infractions or issues in high school. The biggest problem they had with him was his dumb facial hair. Boom. He was like, you know... The the, the, the Yankees the wouldn't allow in, this. If that's the worst you got. If right. If that's the worst you got. Right. I mean, I, I I hate this selection for 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 our boy P. Ryan. Yeah, we got to have a small funeral Fantasy procession. Funeral. Fantasy We're gonna fire off some old Samaje P. Ryan. I, you know, he's my boy. Love the guy. 
need something to probably happen for him here to uh, remain relevant at the moment. But I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm gonna go pick up all of the bottom end P Ryan that I can and just stash him for a while. <laughs> bottom end P Ryan. But, but let's not let's not act like Chris Thompson is the the poster Staple. child for health around over here. Sure, right. And I mean, Geis, not, although I think very capable in the passing game, isn't like the most like. I mean, if they lose Thompson, right. they're going to be. And let's not act. Down. First of all, yes, let's not act act like Thompson is the pillar for health, and let's not act like Geis doesn't run like he doesn't care if he plays next week. Right. True. That's one of the reasons why you love Geis because he is running with reckless abandon, Yo. and that's those types of runners. All of a sudden, they might be out a couple of weeks. So, up. so I, I read an article about how John Gruden was, uh, Jay Gruden was saying something about you know how. We're we're just we're we're not worried about any of that stuff. He's he's we brought him in here to be the one and two. We got Chris Thompson for for the three to you know so we don't have to worry about his pass catching ability. He you know needs to work on a little bit and maybe some pass blocking and stuff like that. Um, but does it so does the slide and then kind of the one two the one two grinder uh, and maybe some Chris Thompson change your opinion on? I know you obviously just took him one mm-hmm. two, so it didn't change it for you. Does it change anything for you, Bico? Right, you got the people that you know you got your Rashad Penny now. That's all of a sudden the Seahawks are throwing their thing <laughs> in on, and you got Chubb and you got Sony Michelle and you got Carry On Johnson, you got Rojo, you got Ronald Jones, so you got options. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it looks like and it seems like obviously in our in our fantasy football rookie draft is going to be heavy to the running backs but it looks like a lot of people's fantasy football rookie draft is going to be slanted to the running backs oh this running year. backs back and it's Ru- hotter than ever running so backs going right to be now. hot and heavy all 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 that hansel he's so hot right now for <laughs> hansel a, yeah a half to the first two thirds of your rookie draft is probably going running back so are you staying with guys at the one two answer the question answer the question all right so Don't tom brady me and plead the i know fifth. what you just I said I, I love the opportunity talent connection here. I like Darius Geis's opportunity and talent comes together. His talent with the team's opportunity for needing somebody to come in and pound a rock. Alex Smith's checkdowns could add PPR points in a hurry, even if Chris Thompson's healthy. You do have your two minute offenses, and you have your sub. You know, you got your bring in Chris Thomas Thompson packages. But you don't always run it on first down. You don't always run it on second down because then you you know they would load the box and know what you did. Like there's going to be plenty of catches for this guy with with the way Alex Smith works because Alex it's not even a it's not even a shot at Alex Smith it's smart when you make the defense defend the flats because you check it down to a running back mm-hmm. or right over the middle when the pressure comes and the de- and the linebackers drop off into coverage and you dump it right over the line and the Darius guys catches it right. I'm saying there's going to be plenty of potential checkdowns coming from a, a smart veteran Alex Smith not a check down city Alex Smith because he can't do any other thing right. he knows. He knows a la Saints offense, spread them out a little bit, make them defend right, le- you know, flat right, flat left, and then he- he's going to spread them out. And I think that Darius Geis has all the opportunity in the world here to blow up with some PPR points and not just be one-two grinder, not catch any passes. So the question at so hand here? Yes. Oh, there was a question. Yeah. Um, Answer the question. I got no problem taking guys at one two. Sure, I, I, it's one of those things like between guys. There guys, hesitation there. There is hesitation because I could Aww. be. I'd be just assume. I'd. I'd be nope. I have no problem with Nick Chubb myself. Like I. I think. I think guys is fine at one two. But there's. I think there's two or three options there that I'm happy with. And I'm. So it's in a way, man. I'm not. It's not a. It's not a like. I, the draft happened and all, and he slipped a little bit. But it's not like like I. I like all. I think I like Nick Chubb just fine, and I'm. You know, I. I I could make an argument for taking Nick Chubb here and not be upset at all about it. I like Nick Chubb a lot, um, but I guess what I'm what I'm saying is like really kind of all these guys have a little bit of a question about what is going on with it. Like Rojo, like there's already people are already questioning whether he's an every down running back, and I know he's got in a good situation. Penny just went to a situation where you know if you want Great to talk situation. about the offensive line or any of that kind of stuff, like. Maybe they aren't the best running team available to go to, and, right. and maybe you don't believe in what Penny has going on. And then you got Carry On Johnson, and it's the Lions. And then you got um, Darius Geis here, where you're like, oh well, you know, who knows? Maybe he's just a one-two down grinder. And Nick Chubb's got Carlos, Carlos Hyde, Hyde and, and Duke, Duke Johnson. Johnson. So all these guys have a little bit of question marks. So really, like, what actually changed? For the one two to one three to one four, I don't really think that much changed for me. I think I'm still pretty okay with taking guys at two here. I like regardless that. of what my team is. I like that. Um, I, I yeah, I could make it. You know, I I feel I like Chubb a good bit, and I feel pretty safe taking Chubb. So if 
I'll take Chubb at one too, but I'm probably going to roll the dice and take the guy like Geis yeah. and, and see what comes out. I, I kind of knocked you there for your hesitation, but I mean, it took me a second being on the clock. You know, we're, we're doing this mock draft and, and we're kind of faking, we're fucking it up so we don't fuck it up. We're mocking it up so we don't fuck it up. And, and we're picking for, you know, teams that we're, we're in this, this home league together, as, as we mentioned on the intro. And, and I mean, I, I hesitated. I looked through the team. I looked through team needs. You know, this dude's got a pretty solid team, even though he's picking second. He lost Aaron Rodgers last year, so that will tank any one QB team if, you, if you're not stacking up on quarterbacks, which you shouldn't be in a one QB league. But I, so, I mean, I had to think about it for a little while, but right. I was basically just trying to find reasons not to take guys. And like, I, I really couldn't. I really couldn't find one. I yeah. read into why he slid, and then I was like, ah, fuck I, that. I could care less about the slide, right. really. Right. Yeah, like, I mean, that's really the only thing that gave me any hesitation, right? I mean, if, if he didn't slide and he was a second back off the board, would there have been any hesitation? Exactly. Right? right. Good point. So the, the slide gave me some hesitation, but the bottom line for me to wrap it all up is just the talent is through the roof. He plays so mean. He's the definition of chip on your shoulder, and he's got even more ammunition now that he was the seventh running back off the board. So right. he's going to come out there with um, – he's just so determined. to, and, and we mentioned how he is a banger, and that leads to being injured, but he also played really well through injury. Right. No. Played through oh, he's tough. Injuries. He's tough. I didn't mean it like he's going to be nicked up and sit out like, you know. Right. But, I mean, he played well through injury at LSU. Like, listen, like – the Redskins, I like Alex Smith. People don't like Alex Smith. I think Alex Smith is just fine. I think he's going to QB3 last do, year? Get out of here. Do great over here in Washington. I like – they have some weapons around him. He just wants him. to be wanted. They have pieces there. <laughs> they I have want a you decent, to want me. They have a decent offensive line. They have Trent Williams on one side and Morgan Moses on the other side and uh, Brandon Sheriff. Sure. Sheriff. In the uh, they got some guys right, right they got guard, some hogs. at right guard they have they have just got hurt they last dealt right. with injuries both Trent a ton of and injuries like sure. we said last like a couple podcasts ago two two uh, guys went down within three plays against the Cowboys I think it was yo they so, had eleven offensive linemen play one hundred and forty or more snaps last year right as running backs these, only averaged one point two nine yards before contact all these landing spots kind of have question marks surrounding them is, is kind of what you I was poke getting. holes in, at, at, in bef- them, at before yeah. not they're not I don't have a really problem with any of them I like all of them and I'm okay with taking any one of these backs that were we're talking about in the top right. couple. Okay, so let me piggyback that for my closing here. The, what we have going on here is the one, two, and we got Darius Geis. So there's two elements here. There's Gar- Darius Geis and the one, two. So if Darius Geis is your boy, you might be able to get him in the one, three, one, four spot because of some other things that's going on. If you're in the one, two spot and you want Darius Geis, take him. If you're in the one, two spot and you're like me and you really don't care because you like like four of these guys and you're in love with them, you could potentially trade down from the one, two to the one, three or one, four and make some money, make some equity for your team, some few draft picks or pick up a, a you know a good player in addition to to move from one, two to one, four and just grab a solid running back because there's four, five, six options here that makes it make us all salivate, if you will. So just wanted to throw that out right. there in my closing. If you're in the one, two and you're undecided, just trade back to one, three or one, four, do it slowly. Trade back a pick or two at a time and continue to yeah. just crush those, those pickups and just and throw some more money in the bank there. We're, if you feel really solid about it, grab your Darius guys. If you're sitting at the one, four, you might even get Darius guys. Anyway, this, the whole rookie after one, one, basically one, two, one, three, one, four is just basically up in the air to the eye of the beholder. But like right. Jason said, if Darius Geis went in the end of the first round as a second back off the board, he had been the one-two all off season. Probably would have cemented it. But now there's question marks all over the place. Just take advantage of it, whichever way your your gut tells you, and enjoy your fantasy team. And, and we're centering this kind of mock draft a little bit more around like a home league that we have. So it's a little bit more realistic when you're making picks because there's a roster in place here. But for us, everyone in this room is is running back mostly heavy especially in rookie drafts right. really in any draft although i find myself part. with these top end wide receivers just wanting to take them all the time i don't right. know why i want to and but there's then nothing I, wrong with that but it's like casey's about to say but there's only a couple of those i'm, but, I'm like all the other well, what i'm saying is, is like we're not we, we can kind of take the team aspect out of what we're doing here for us personally for now out of, the top out of this. like you know for Basically, me, the first for us, six or seven right, picks. For us, for the first, you know, maybe maybe five or six picks, unless you absolutely are like ridiculous that you got a bunch of running backs and you are just barren at receiver, and there's no no nothing wrong with taking a shot on DJ Moore after, in my opinion, probably Sony Michelle if you really wanted to, right? Because you just have maybe you have Le'Veon Bell and Ezekiel Elliott or something like that, and you need those you're teams just, are possible. You're barren at that. Where you got a you got a good one and a bunch of twos, and I know we just said that it could go the other way, but I'm saying for these first couple of picks, 
my roster doesn't matter that much right. in this class because I'm taking the running back. Yeah. Well, I haven't even talked about Clayton's team. Right. Exactly. For here. See, it doesn't matter who's on his team. Like we brought to you, like we told you when we first started tonight, that we did this last year. We were looking forward to this mock it up before you fuck it up. Last year we did this. We had a couple of wide receivers that were arguable in that top top area. Um, you know, obviously the tennis, Corey Davis, Corey Davis was there in that very top. You, you plenty could, of people will make an argument for for. DJ, DJ Moore, Moore being in this argument, it's just yeah. not for us at this particular time. Uh, yeah, I've, at this I've particular seen, point in I've the draft, I've seen some people trying to put their foot down for Christian Kirk in the top six or seven of a rookie draft. But like this is that ain't a, for me exactly. So that's and to, it doesn't what, matter. My roster is the point that I was making exactly. For the first so we'll, we'll we'll talk more about these teams as the picks go on. But yeah, for the first four, five, or six picks here, is the teams are kind of to us philosophy wise, the, it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're taking running back, and you know this, <laughs> man. <laughs> Well, the commissioner is telling us the new pick is in, but you're going to have to wait because we're up against a break here, Kamish. Yep. This first segment has been brought to you by Revelry Brewing Company, our main sponsor. The best craft beer Charleston has to offer. Whether you're local or just visiting, you got to hit up their rooftop bar. And coming soon, their new location, The Hold. They'll be specializing in barrel-aged and sour beers. All right, let's get to this break, and we'll be back with more Married to the Game. All right, and we're ready to go with the third pick in the 2018 Mock It Up Before You Fuck It Up draft. I'm going to throw it over here to Casey to make his pick. If I was the commissioner right now, the boos would still be just as strong as they were on the first pick. What you thinking <laughs> over there, Casey, with the third pick in the draft? I'm going to select old Nick Chubb, as I alluded to in the other, uh, when you were talking about guys, I felt pretty safe and comfortable drafting him at two if if I felt so inclined on that particular day and maybe I had some guys somewhere else or something or maybe I just wanted Chubb but <laughs> I'm taking Chubb here at three um, I just I feel really safe with Nick Chubb I know he had a gruesome knee injury and all that stuff but he's been he's back he played two seasons without a knee knee brace on his knee I've, I've suffered a knee injury I wear a brace every time I do anything athletic and for this guy to suffer the kind of injury that he did and be out there without a brace is just brings joy of tears of joy to my eyes sure and i feel great about nick chubb his abilities what he can do i believe i said he still has that sauce last time we <laughs> talked about him <laughs> and it might I, even be the youtube clip name i firmly believe that um again we're, we're picking for teams here and I, I didn't take much of the roster into consideration here because you still can't i'm can't. taking i'm taking nick chubb just like we said and he actually does need a running back because He's got Melvin Gordon. Which team is that you're picking for? Tickle Monsters. Mm. Uh, he has Terrible Melvin. Team name. <laughs> it's a great team name, especially <laughs> when you see the picture at the bottom. Uh, it's Melvin Gordon, Doug Martin, Bilal Powell, um, Jaquiz Rogers, James White, and Danny Woodhead. So this guy's in need. Well, that got ugly real quick. He yeah. also got Wayne Gallman, but Saquon quickly shut that down. Right. So he needed a he needed Chubb, but back to back to Chubb and what he does for the Browns. At, immediately. Um, on day two, the Browns go and pick up Austin Corbett, a strong tackle, 98% uh, percent pass blocking grade of uh, for PFF there, only allowed 12 pressures, uh, four-year starter at left tackle for Nebraska, or uh, Nevada there. They obviously lost an irreplaceable right. all-pro, first ballot probably Hall of Fame, just... Yep. Gold jackets, gold everything for this guy. R.I.P. Joe they, Staley. They, 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 yeah, R.I.P. Joe Staley and just a rock on just... Is it not Joe Thomas? Or Joe sorry, Thomas, uh, dang it. Yep. Hey, I got you too. You did. You did. Well, <laughs> you got me. You said it, and then I kept going. You love Joe Staley, the I do 49er. love Joe Staley. Yeah. Yeah, that's his boy. <laughs> also a bookend. <laughs> but not a first ballot Hall of Famer, not even close. Uh, uh, no, it's Joe Thomas. Anyway, first ballot. so it's Joe Thomas here. He's, he's pretty irreplaceable, so... They went and took Austin Corbett, and then two picks later, you take Chubb. I love that. again, And he's getting paired up with an already pretty decent offensive line. There's a solid group of Hevs in, in Cleveland right now, <laughs> with Hebs. Sean Coleman probably being the biggest liability, and he gets put on notice with this pick here. Sure. Um, I love to see when teams have – sorry to cut you off. I no. love to see when teams have – Good offensive lines, and then they add to it early. Right, just pack, just pack it in. You can never have too many good and offensive lines. There's no way your offensive line could be as good as it was last year, right? Without or ever without Joe True Thomas anchoring it over there. But you you still have Jason. They did a lot of work in free agency. They have last Tons year. Of work. Um, they well last year for the offensive line. Oh, okay, they had they added uh, J C Treader is a solid center. Uh, Joe Batonio, um, who's just a stud left guard. Um, he's PFF seventh best uh, yeah. 
player at that position. Then they added Zietler, the right guard. Um, stud, maybe a little bit of a down year last year, but still graded out as the 10th best player. Yeah, super solid in the middle right. of that line. And then they picked up Chris Hubbard from the Steelers, who got some action last year uh, when they had some injuries. It was not a little leaky, but not terrible. So really, this, this shapes into a pretty good offensive line. They've got weapons everywhere because they did, again, talking to the free agency point of this okay. year, they did some work there. Yeah. Um, and then they bring in Tyrod and they draft, obviously draft Baker Mayfield. So either both of them give them a little bit of mobility outside the pocket, yes. maybe Tyrod a little more so. But I like this combination of what's going on in Cleveland. And my, my favorite thing that Cleveland did is they brought in the new GM here and say what you want. Maybe you're a Sashi Brown guy and you think John dorsey's stupid or whatever but he went out and he just got his guys he changed he's he's bringing what he wants to do into this organization and I, I i commend him for it i like the draft that they just had i like the the baker pick i like the corbett pick i like the chubb pick i like the i like the taking a swing on uh Callaway there, which he's no oh, the no stranger yeah. to taking shots on guys who have you know Same. been in trouble before. Same guy that took Tyreek Tyree Hill for Kill the and, you know you know how to deal with it. You, it'll get swept under the rug if this guy can just keep his stuff together here. Right. Eventually, you will you won't even care that there was all this. You and every team needs to draft a weed guy. But let's let, be serious. <laughs> but let's connect those dots for our <laughs> listeners real quick. Dorsey's the guy that picked up Tyreek Hill late in the draft as a absolute. GM. That what I say? You just said I said he's the, the guy. guy. Okay, okay. I was like, yeah, I didn't call him the coach. Dorsey's the GM that said, hey, let's take a chance on Tyreek Hill and look how that turned out for the Chiefs. Dorsey comes over to the Browns, makes some really solid moves all over the place. Uh, we argue if you want to or what they did at pick one four in the draft. Would have rather had to D end up in Chubb, but then they come back and get another Chubb, which could make things really confusing when you're talking about people talking to people about the draft. But anyway, I too many Chubbs. Lots of Chubbs over there. Uh, <laughs> Has anybody ever said there's too many Chubbs? <laughs> Probably but, someone but so, whoever, whoever started bag of dicks. The Callaway, <laughs> the Callaway pickup for the for the Browns is just basically bringing in talent when you don't. At this point, you don't even need it because right. they got this. Like you said, they got talent now. You don't think about Browns having talent, but Josh Gordon, Duke Johnson, Carlos Hyde. Now they got Chubb. They Corey got Corey Coleman and Joku, Jarvis, Jarvis Landry. Landry. They're just and and Ryan McDowell's got a tweet going around in the last couple of weeks about they had top five. I think they had the most players in the top 100 of a dynasty ADP of any team in the league. And I was like, "What the Browns do?" And it just didn't add up. You don't think about it like that. So now the Browns, Tyrod, yeah, well, he's not Baker. the top hundred, but the well, the yeah. talent like Casey talked to about the mobility of the quarterbacks. You got the Browns' weapons. I like what they're doing. I like what they're doing now. And Browns are must see TV at this point. I say that about a couple of teams, and I, I mean obviously NFL is must see TV. Any player, anybody that's playing, but nothing else for the parade at the end of the season, you know. Right. I think the the mobility of the quarterbacks helps helps the running back. You can see what Tyrod's done in the last couple of years. Not that Shady McCoy needs a lot of help, but I mean that's just what happens when you have a mobile quarterback. I think you know if Hyde was to get hurt, I think Chubb kills, and I think they can coexist together. Maybe the, for the first year, it's not great because they do have all those guys. But like Casey said, the GM and Dorsey's coming there bringing in his guys. I think the Landry pickup is completely underrated for the ability for the team to get a flow on offense and pick up some first downs, which has been incredibly hard for the Browns to do in like 20 years. Right. And I love I, you brought in you brought in Todd Haley. I love bringing in Todd Haley. Sure. To, to, to run this offense. He's just had a lot of success at scoring points and, and bringing a bell cow back into this league. And obviously he's been gifted some great bell cow backs in his time. He got Edder, Edron James at the end of his career in Arizona. He had Jamal Charles in Kansas City. And then, and then you get Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell. Bell. Um, obviously those are great, but he, <laughs> he, he's been fortunate, but now he's trying to get Another bell cow guy. They they obviously spent some money on on uh, Hyde. Carlos Hyde and that was insurance. That was the, what do you? I mean, the, good for them. They they went they went and got a guy who they could have played all year. And who knows how it'll really turn out this year? Nobody actually knows. No. Uh, but I have an idea that Chubb's probably going to get some decent run, and Carlos will, you know, split some time, and maybe Duke will get in there on third down. But Duke's probably out the door, most likely. This is somebody else's guy. Right. We'll we'll probably ship him out and and, they, and do something else, but I I be think too Chubb's expensive. I think Chubb's going to be really safe for you and and you know it's not oh, we're playing dynasty here it's exactly. not always just exactly. this one year this one thing oh it's just this opportunity I love what Chubb brings to the table right I love his game I love his skill set I do think he can catch balls I think he's he's back to pretty close to where he was and I think we said this at one point if he would have never gotten hurt it might be you might might not be a no brainer. To pick Saquon Barkley at the one-one here, yeah, because he was that good, yeah, and I, I, I just love it. I love everything that the Browns are doing right now, and the way they're going, and the way they're progressing, and and hopefully, 
you know, maybe it's not this year, but it's maybe next year's their Jaguars year where there you go. You know, you're, you're not talking about them as a joke, and you're you're, you're talking about them making them all these good decisions, and you don't want to see the Jaguars right now. And sure. they, they made a bunch of picks on defense. They had they kind of had a framework of a defense in there, and they played be- a lot better than most people thought they did last year. So there's a ton of things to like and parts and pieces. And if they stay in some games and can get a quarterback, I mean, you had Kaiser starting for you last year. Great fantasy quarterback, really, for you. Not a terrible start, but in real life, eh, yeah, yeah, not so much. For sure. So I really like this situation. I, I, I got, okay, Carlos Hyde's there for a year, maybe two. Duke Johnson's probably out there, out after this year, and maybe you don't get a ton of usage out of Chubb for for your year this year. Maybe he's not an RB one, but I think the writing's on the wall for him to be an RB one and potentially be a top five, top six, top ten running back year in year out. No doubt, there's a lot of RB ones out there in the last couple of years that didn't have anywhere near Chubb's skill set and and physical presence and. Let's face it, Hyde has not been healthy for many of right. his NFL Again, seasons. Not a good point. Not a poster boy of health either. And, you know, just they, they just drafted their guy. I can't not see them just being like, oh, you know, what? we're going to sit Chubb and we're just going to let Carlos play this year. Like, I don't think so, man. I mean, you've, you've seen this happen before where somebody acquires a, a, a free agent because he was available and you could and you know, it's an insurance policy and then you go draft a guy and all of a sudden he might be riding a little more pine than expected. Oh, well, this is exactly what happened to the Vikings last year. They bring in Latavius Murray as an insurance policy for free. Boom. Then they go out and get they, Dalvin and Cook. And they paid him a and, decent amount of money. Exactly. And then, then they bring in Dalvin Cook and all of a sudden Dalvin Cook's the best football and player they've ever seen. They also and have Jarek McKinnon there who's kind of duke johnson ish yeah so similar situation and all of a sudden dalvin cook was the man if if dalvin cook would have went the rest of the season doing what he's doing he'd be unobtainable right now he's still at least very marginally uh, obtainable but he's not quite in the level of those other bell cow roll type of guys are and but that's a great example that is a great example so casey you took chubb here at three is that is that what you're doing big co you taking chubb at three good question Yeah. yeah i'm not passing on chubb at three. Ooh. That's a that's a switcheroo from the rankings when we had you went you went Sony, yeah, you and I both went Sony. I that's I don't know. Question. You got so you're you, you well, have some you have some pause there. I I and it's, it's and we're about to get, get to Sony, so save the breakdown if you got some. I'm not yeah, I'm not gonna break down Sony, and I'm I'm taking Sony Michelle at four, and I know that's not a very popular pick with many hey, people. How could you? Get the sorry, sorry. <laughs> I saw my paper, saw my computer here. Pick's not in yet. My bad. It's it's a bad, war, bad war room over you there. You just said we're about to get to Sony. Listen, eventually, listen, we're not putting round. the camera on the players anymore, so you have to wait for the ding. My bad, my bad. Both of y'all are tearing me up right now. <laughs> I did, but it's but but CJ, but but Boo. Casey, Casey just no, Casey, yeah, right. Casey just <laughs> called me out. He called me out on the switch, the switcheroo, and, and the switch is fine. You're allowed yeah. to switch. He, I switch? did switch. I switch. I like and the I'll switch. T- I tell the you switch what, is okay. <laughs> <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with it. Not at all. <laughs> I did switch, and I'll leave the switch. I'll, my logic behind the switch, I've already just talked about how I like Chubb and I like what the Browns are doing, and I'm there. I'm so interested to watch Browns football games this year, and I can't believe I just said that. So I'll I'll leave the switch details and the logic behind the switch to bring Ch- Sony down to number four mm. when we talk the about tease, Sony at the number tease, four. The tease. How about you, Jay Wayne? I don't know. Right. I had Sony pre-NFL draft at number three. I just, I just I had to. Sony got picked uh, up before the chip, before Chubb did. That's true, but so did all these players before Geis went, and that didn't matter to me. I think, I think I probably still got to go Sony at three. Stick to your guns. I think I style, I, but I don't know that I can really justify that. So let's. Right. Uh, well, it looks like the commissioner's making his way. Oh, how's that? How's that? Huh? huh? Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> In sync. All right. So with the fourth pick of the 2018, mock it up before you fuck it up. Big Co, you're on the clock. You just spoiled it. So. I did spoil it. I spoiled it with Sony Michelle, and this is my first pick for the draft, really, because I took Barkley at one and I copped out. When we were right. talking about this, I got super lucky that we we're trying to. Again, we've not really talking about the the rosters here of our home league that kind of maps out our mock it up before you fuck it up teams and picks and all that. We didn't want to pick for each other. So I got lucky in my picks, the way it fell through, it was, it made it, made it right for me to be picking one. And I really just wanted to pick one. Cause I didn't want to choose between guys and Chubb. <laughs> I, I really got lucky to be able to get the first pick in this draft. So taking Sony Michelle here at one, four is my real first decision. Obviously there was no decision at one with Barkley. So I will go Michelle here at four. 
And I, there's some I, there's some elephant in the room if you're listening at home, which we hope you are, or on the road, or at work, not working. You're probably thinking, well, when is Rashad Penny jumping in here and some of these other or cats? Or DJ Moore. Like, right. Some or, people think DJ Moore. What's you going on DJ in this Moore first over. round? Because it's going close to chalk before the NFL draft happened. Well, I said it just a second ago. I, there's a, I got logic between Nick Chubb at three and four, but let me just talk it about – let me before I break down that logic for four on on the difference between Chubb and Sony, I think that people making the big mistake of saying the Patriots and the running backs, and I've seen Sony go down to like pick seven or eight in a rookie draft, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tear your head off if that's in my rookie draft because I'm coming up to get him. The Patriots have done things with their running backs in the last couple years with. Deion Lewis and James White and Rex Burkhead and Woodhead and 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 why, and, 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 and why can't Sony Michelle be a souped up Deion Lewis? I like Deion Lewis in his own right. I know, and, but and that's what, what Deion Lewis does. Deion why Lewis, can't he do what Deion Lewis just did? Well, but and De- more. Deion Lewis right. is a fifth round pick. James White was a fourth round pick, who I'm pretty sure wouldn't have gone anywhere near the fourth round if the Patriots weren't doing Patriots things and picking people in the middle of the draft that nobody was even looking at. Yeah, let's because, get this guy because we passes. got plans for this guy. The but the Patriots put Danny Woodhead on the board. You know, the, the Patriots put made made Rex Burkhead come out and look really good. Not that Rex Burkhead's not a good football player, but they they have plans for players and they fit them to their needs and they get away get away with this. You know, just this. I'm gonna take this guy off the bargain bin shopper. Like they've made they've they've made the bargain bin shopping productive and put in. They've made the Super Bowl year after year after year, just like paying players minimal and just, I mean just right. ridiculous. Using the way, using schemes and disadvantage of being like, all right, I'm gonna set this guy out here for this, and you're 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 ready for this, so I'm gonna put Legarrette out here and pound you. Exactly. You're ready for this, so I'm gonna put Deion Lewis out here for this. Maybe I'm gonna hand it to him. Maybe I'm gonna throw it to him. They're just their their schemes. And they'll score touchdowns with Rex Burkhead. Right, their schemes have been light years ahead of the NFL for basically two decades now. So they, I think the 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 whole story about well, you know how the Patriots treat their running backs. Here's the thing, Tom Brady hadn't been has not been getting any younger for like five years now, and he's definitely not getting any younger now, and he's still one of the best quarterbacks out there playing each and every week. Not He's not the one of the best because he's got all these rings and he's earned it and he's earned the respect. Like We saw Peyton do a hard fall off and we've saw we've seen plenty of quarterbacks do a hard drop off and Brady's drop off may be coming, but it ain't here yet. But the thing is with Brady, Belichick's like, hey, let's go ahead. We got the first pick in the first round for them was an offensive lineman. We're going to bring in the offensive lineman. You mentioned letting the tackle go to the Giants. Solder to the Giants. Right. You lose the dog tackle, the long-time tackle to the Giants, so they go in and just bring another one of those guys in in the first round instead of trading back. And the whole question about whether or not going to trade up for a Lamar Jackson or they're going to take Lamar Jackson one of those picks or they're going to trade up for a quarterback. They showed you their plans. They circled the wagons around Brady. They took a first-round offensive lineman. Yeah, they take Isaiah Wynn, another Georgia Bulldog, just pairing up Bulldogs on good teams, sure. good well, coaching. Well, they, they took him before Sony Michelle, so they had a Georgia Bulldog offensive lineman. They bring in Sony Michelle, who's been running behind him all year, tearing it up. And Sony, what I was started, the way I started it was Deion Lewis, James White, Rex Burkhead, Danny Woodhead, Legarrette Blunt, like. Sony Michelle is so much better of a running back. He's basically all those running backs put together is what Sony Michelle is. He can do what LeGarrette Blunt does. He can do what Deion Lewis does. He can do what all those boys do. And they took him in the first round. And if they didn't have plans to get him the ball, I guarantee you that the Patriots could have found somebody else to come in there and fill Deion Lewis's spot if they were going to have James White all over the field and use Rex all over the field. The Patriots just took an insurance policy on Tom Brady instead of making it Lamar Jackson. They're like, hey, let's put Sony Michelle out there with him and help us win Try some to games. Try win now. And go, exactly. Let's win one more before this thing's over or with. Or two. Or two. Exactly. Same, same reason that the Giants probably took a running back with one. Eli's not dead yet. He can manage you to a Super Bowl. You got a defense and a run game. Crazy how that works. Crazy how that works. Um, but you mentioned all those guys. They were so close to resurrecting Jeremy Hill. <laughs> they were so close. <laughs> <laughs> so close. But <laughs> but, but they draft. <laughs> they, they draft uh, Sony Michelle here because he's pretty much. They just, in my opinion, I don't know if this is, but it's a mismatch. It's a mismatch. Exactly. It's a exactly. mismatch. Exactly. And what do the Patriots do? 
They, they mismatch. mismatch you. They mismatch you. That's yeah. what they do. They invented the mismatch. It's a mismatch. And that's why everyone likes Sony coming in because he was, you know, the mismatch kind of running back. You can give it to him, but he's also can do a couple of different things. He was pretty versatile. This is the reason why you like Sony Michelle and people are disappointed with the landing spot. I think this fits his scheme perfectly. Now, Perfect. maybe Bill Belichick and Tom Brady walk out the door after this year or next year, and who knows what you're left with. And well, then, well, you're left on you're left with the bone on bone. And, and we are playing the long game here. Well, injury. but and now I'm not gonna lie when that bone on bone injury thing came and out. Maybe the Patriots float that out there just so we can get our guy. That's what I said. <laughs> Somebody was floated it out there, right? What a miserable the time to float that out there. Somebody's a real prick. Yeah. yeah. They just cost him a bunch of money. No, they didn't really cost him any money. He what you got it. on Sony Michelle J. No, I mean Sony would have probably gone higher, maybe. Uh, I, don't I don't think know. so. I think that's I think that was about capped out right there. Yeah. If you're not chomping at the bit on some Sony Michelle talk, I gotta tell these guys why I took Chubb over Sony Michelle. Go for it. Casey just said it. If Bill Belichick and Tom Brady call the same quits in 12, 12 months or 24 months, Sony Michelle's still awesome, but the Patriots are the Patriots, and he's in the first round, so he's on a four-year and a fifth-year potential deal here. I don't really want to be around for life after Brady and Belichick with my fantasy team. So I'm taking Chubb over Sony, but in the next year or two, I think Sony Michelle could be absolutely freaking awesome. A must start every single week for your court, for your team. Uh, the, the, the mismatch machine that are the Patriots took a mismatch running back in the first round. They take mismatch running backs in the fifth round and the fourth round and all that good stuff, and they make it work, and these guys are good. They just took a great running back. And Deion Lewis is. We need to expedite the process here. Wishes Let's he could be Sony Michelle. This match that we could just put yeah. where we want. <laughs> yeah, expedite the process. I, lo- I love it. I love it. What are, we're on to Cincinnati. Um, <laughs> They're on to Deion Lewis. Just kidding, Sony Michelle. Yeah, I mean Sony Michelle is just so fun to watch. I, I, I've loved him uh, coming out of the draft or coming into the draft. The bone on bone thing gave me a little bit of hesitation, but I mean, Jay Ajayi's about to play out his rookie contract and then hasn't fallen off yet. Yep. I don't know what's going to happen there. But, I mean, the, for the Patriots to, to just take that swing in the first round on this guy who I know has probably a higher solid PPR floor than Nick Chubb does, even if it's just for the next two years, I guess that's enough for me. I don't know. I just like him so much. He's just he, I, I liked him before the draft. I, I don't hate the landing spot. I mean, yeah, Cleveland has a ton of potential here, but it's tough to like that landing spot yeah. no matter what. I'm just, I'm, and I know, I, I know you got to be ahead of the curve because I know it's coming. Like you, 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 you I want a great the, point I about want the them. potential. They could be the Jackson. I want Jaguars. the potential bell cow. That's what I'm looking for. And I like this is a good pick, and I, I can't argue with it at all. If I'm at four, I mean, Sony I, could be a bell cow. I just, I don't see him as a bell cow. I, I don't see him as a Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, Ezekiel Elliott, David Johnson, like Bell Cow. I just, I just don't. That's my personal opinion. I think Nick Chubb could be that guy who could get you a bunch of carries and 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 ca- a couple of catches a game. And Todd Haley's a guy who can put him in that position. He knows he's had Le'Veon. He's had these great running backs, and that that's why I'm going Chubb over Sony still. And I bet you that the Patriots use the shit out of him, right? I mean, they can't spend a first round pick on this dude and not just oh, I mean, I'm, run I'm, him into the ground. With I just it. told you how much I do. I like the I like the fit and I like I like the pick. I like all that kind of stuff. I just gotta go, Chubb. I'm, I'm, yeah, well, and all I those and all those I bell cows. and the long game. Then to go along with that, <clears throat> sure. All those bell cows you just mentioned though. Dalvin's the lightest guy. Dalvin's what two ten, two twelve. I mean, he's the same size as Sony Michelle. So I think I think we got a good chance with Sony Michelle getting close into that. If the if the Patriots there can't be that much gap though between three and four here, right? Between no. Chubb and Michelle, I don't see a huge gap. I got, a decent, definitely I got a, gap. a decent gap. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, if we all agreed on everything, it wouldn't be any yeah. fun. No, I mean, I've been hot on Chubb, and I like Chubb, and I like his ability. Like I said, I don't think he's too far removed from the guy who was close to being challenging Saquon for being this freak. So Super freak. What was it Mike Mayock? He's like, he's super freaky. Oh, freak. man. I can't believe <laughs> we didn't record that. Saying on, on It was so bad. Oh, we should have got that. Well, anybody that's ever watched the NFL draft knows that that sound means there's a new pick in, <laughs> but you got to wait. We're up against a hard break here. <laughs> hard break. brought to you by our sponsor. Your name here. here. <laughs> Hit us up. All right. We'll be back with more Mox Knicks. With the fifth pick of the 2018 mock it up before you fuck it up draft. We got Jay Wayne on the clock. Who you got? Man, this was a toughie. This is like a swing. This is the swing state. This is the this is the turn of the draft. It's it gonna me, be red or blue. Took me probably the longest 
of all these picks to decide on. I'm, I'm picking for Mr. Shikadance. That's Casey's team in you know, the 12-man home league that we're all in. Looking at his team, you know, that's the first place I went. He's good at quarterback. He's got some solid running backs, solid wide receivers. Mm, tight ends, little struggle there with Jared Cook. Just Jared Cook hanging out, but John o. Smith on the bottom. John and, o. Smith and, and, and Gerald Everett. And Gerald Everett. We're so, hopeful for the future with uh, the tight end. A couple of good little prospects there. Sure, and either one of those could break out this year, and, and, and Jared Cook's a solid option. Not that tight end is really on the board at all right here in a, in a non-tight end premium, non-two-tight end league. This is just one tight end, PPR, one quarterback. Standard issue. Standard ish. Well, nobody's ever lucky to lose David Johnson. But you're going to get him back. Dave, uh, David Johnson goes down week one for Casey here and helps barrel roll his team down to, down to standings there. But when he comes back, he's got a better draft pick this year. He's like, you know, Jay said, he's got some solid, solid yeah, talent. But my, my squad got bit by, by, by the old uh, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb bug there. Yeah, yeah. Carlos Hyde we, took a hit there. Me, me and Big Co have several teams with, with some Hyde action on it. And we first day we were slapping hands, the next day. Oh yeah, when the day Browns, one you the were dirt. pumped day <laughs> two. When, when the Browns dodged Saquon Barkley and the Giants took him, we were super excited for our Browns running back love between Duke Johnson and Carlos Hyde spread out across the FF PC league, PC leagues and all that stuff and home leagues and everything else. And sure enough, early in the second round, they grabbed Nick Chubb and just slap us in the face. So you got you got better wide receiver options than than running back for sure. You got Devontae, you got Dougie Fresh, you got Mike Evans, uh Marvin, Marvin Jones, Jones, Sterling, Sterling Shepard, Shepard, Chris Hogan, and Terrell Pryor. All very ever solid disrespected options. Disrespected Chris here. Hogan, sure, for sure. He's been trying to sell him, can't get value for him that he's worth. Tyrell Williams waiting in the wings on the right. Down below. So, 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 I, what I, pick are you making? I can't be mad at you. I really wanted to take DJ Moore here. I was, I was struggling with DJ Moore, but then knowing Casey's team, I know he's not going to take a wide receiver here in the top five. Probably not, right? But I mean, did, well, prob no, no. But did did the receiving core sway you away from from the receiver? Maybe pick? a little bit. Maybe it made it a little easier uh, to to go with my boy Carry on. Johnson. All right, Carry On's off the board. There could be a low star review for this because somebody's upset about that. I'm sure. sure. For sure, but if there's one thing I've learned through these these rookie drafts that we've been involved in recently, is that people are higher on carry on than I thought maybe they were. Well, you know, you get you get a early early day two selection, selection trade and, up, and it invigorates and some some draft stock of carry on Johnson, someone that we coveted before the process here. Um, and yeah. who knows what's actually going to happen here? I but. don't know if I saw anybody higher on carry on Johnson than us before the no draft. no way, not before the draft, but. Yeah then, you know, he didn't – they, they like to act like he had a bad combine, but I didn't think it was, was too, too bad. He didn't run a 40, but he had a solid vert and three-cone drills near seven seconds. I mean, and he, I, don't, I don't really care. I like the tape, man. I, he was my number five running back pre-draft. He's my number five running back post-draft. The fifth running back off the board here, so you're sticking true to your pre-draft rankings here. Nothing's much changed. Right. I mean, this just, dude is just let – me, let me get this guy, man. There's, there's, there's a lot of trade talk, trade back – talk to be had right here and i know we're going to get into that in a second and depending on your league Let's mates carry on as do though but and, and depending on how you know depending on how 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 active your league members are and how long you're on the clock for and how long you have to make deals and stuff you may or may not be able to trade back so sometimes you just got to take your guy right and we're not trading back in this mock draft here so i couldn't be, hit up casey and big co and try and trade one of these yes, picks that would, that right would take a while so so I'm going. I'm going carry on quite confidently. Uh, I I know that DJ Moore is the alluring, exciting, sexy, glamorous pick here, and I really can't blame you too much if you want to take him. I really wanted to myself, but give me the rock that is carry on Johnson. So what about Penny? Because pe people are Penny drafted higher. People are loving the Penny. But people did are also way, hating on the Seahawks because they're like they could have traded they could have traded back and not taken him did, that high. They didn't did he need weigh to. in your decision at all, or was it just carry on nah. and, and and Rojo, or just carry on and DJ Moore? I, I thought about Rojo. Yeah, sure. I contemplated Rojo, and I I pro I gave I gave Penny his 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 due diligence, but he was just Penny's net hasn't been my favorite up to this point at all. Uh, we'll get into Penny here pretty soon, and so I'll I'll save I'll save my negativity for Penny, I guess. But I just I got all this positivity for carry on. I mean, this dude is just he's just a vicious runner. He's got all the tools in the kit. He's got the mean stiff arm, the sidestep, the lateral cut. He can bull you over. He makes guys miss behind the line of scrimmage in the open field. 
He's at the top of this draft in when it comes to pass protection, and he's an underrated handsy catcher. Right. And he plays through injury. I mean, I just I just love everything about Carry On. I love this offense. Um, they've they've done some. They've got a decent offensive line. Um, I know Matt Stafford doesn't love to hand the ball off. The Lions generally don't, but they got a new head coach. And right. maybe the thing is changing here, and I, and and they they moved up to get him. I like that a lot. Big I mean, Co. They got Legarrette that. Blunt on a one-year deal. You move up deal. to get a guy, Big Co's on you're on his radar, right? <laughs> I mean, everybody's on my radar with the Lions. It's my team, and I've been right. telling you guys for the last couple of years on this show. They they've told us that they're going to pound the rock and they're going to change things up, and I've told you not to listen to them, not to listen to them, not to listen to them. So now you got the change in the coach, and the first round pick is offensive lineman. Love that. Some, some uh, you know, steps in the right direction last year on the offensive line, but it just fell apart again when it comes to running the ball. And next thing you know, we got a dude named Teon Green in there leading us for carries toward the end of the season. Things just, the whole running back position for the Lions, wheels fell off again last year, just like I told you it would. I did have some hope for, um, what's his name, Amir Abdullah, but it just, it never came to fruition last year change up the staff change up some things first round offensive lineman again they've been doing this for a couple years now trying to fit, get this thing right j wayne smitten for carry on johnson casey loves carry on johnson i really 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 like carry on johnson i probably like him the least out of the three of us and i like him a lot so that's saying something we all really like him a lot um i j uh, casey didn't bring didn't wait too long to throw rashad penny in jason's face on this pick we we're talking about the one five here in this mock it up before you fuck it up so you got carry on Johnson, the one five pick from and and Jay Wayne hit the nail on the head. Some we pl- we got one and this league exactly last year when it ran off the draft, the rookie draft, we had ten minutes per pick. Right. So it was hot and heavy and sweaty, making phone calls, texting people. You got two computer screens up. You're trying to make deals. You only got ten minutes, and there was only like two traits all draft. And it's most of that stuff was worked out. It was went on later in the draft when you had time to think about it. Oh no, it. I was under the I, I, Casey called me. He had one ten, and Mike Williams was there, and I was like, "Let me get Mike Williams." I got ten minutes. So let's get this <laughs> right, deal done. Right, right, <laughs> I right. Totally blew my cool. <laughs> didn't even gave him whatever he wanted. Didn't even counter back. <laughs> so I know you, you're my best offer first. Sometimes you got to take your guy, and that's what you did there because Carry On Johnson is your guy, and I don't blame you one bit. I like Carry On Johnson, and I hope it works out. I hope it works out a ton for the Lions and carry on johnson together if it's me i don't know if in the one five spot i can pass up on rashad penny and i'll tell you why i guess when we talk about rashad penny but right now i love carry on johnson pick for the lions like like casey said he was the fifth pick off the board he's the fifth pick in this draft darius geist came back up in this draft he fell down penny is the one missing here off of that five picks of who got picked in the actual nfl draft so i don't blame you for taking him i hope it works out for the lions i wouldn't take him at one five do what Casey said, what, well, what you alluded to, if I'm sitting at one five and I really won't carry on Johnson, I think it's an easy two or three pick trade back to, to move back and take him, grab some equity, throw it in the bank, pick carry on Johnson two or three picks later. There's no reason that you have to take him at five. So, so we'll jump into maybe a little bit more of this trade talk about why and how and, and, and whatnot here. But before we do, like I, I want to, I like care. The reason I like carry on Johnson, all the reasons that, Jason mentioned but the biggest thing that stuck out to me and when we talked about him is is when we mentioned like I just felt like he was one of those guys who outside of those top guys he was just another guy for me that I just felt very comfortable wherever he went he didn't need a scheme to to help him do anything yep he just needs the ball he could catch the ball he could run between the tackles he could elude you he could do everything you need him to do and they have a new head coach. They come in and they get a guy who they haven't had on this roster. A guy who they don't need to change anybody out. Yeah. He carry on Johnson can stay on the field. For any yeah. play. For any play and do anything they need him to do. Yeah. That's why I'm into this pick. I mean, yes, I would the penny the whole penny thing and why and all that. I, penny, but I, like I had where Penny you're going evaluated under uh Carry Rojo on. and carry on before this process starts and maybe some of that shifted and we're going to get into Penny in, yep. in a minute and I'll talk about all that. But but hammer home. I like where you're going with that carry on right there. But I like I, where you're going with that. I, I felt like he was pretty insulated in, in what he didn't need a whole lot to help him out. He's very versatile. He can do a bunch of stuff. And then on top of that, you get a new head coach who comes from the Patriots, who are typically one of the most balanced team in the league. Yep. And he's been around that organization for a long time and known what to do is defensive minded so you 
I obviously we're talking about hyperbole and all that kind of stuff right now. Some people this drains them, but this is what this is really all about. Sure. If this drains you, what are you doing? Yeah. Um so Being staunch. You got you got a defensive coach here who probably wants to play defense and run the ball. And yeah. you've retained your offensive coordinator, so that doesn't way great for getting into the run game but you have a head coach who can be like hey bo we're about to take this guy we traded up for this guy and in the first round oh by the way we took a center and i love these right. teams just like chubb and, and the browns they went and paired name. up a, a, a running back and a lineman and the giants took you know switched it up a little yeah, bit but yeah, still got yeah. a good lineman late rag now first round you pick see the for intention the lions, of the team you see the intention who is a very solid player who they're going to go in and they've got him penciled in as immediate starter, supposed to be a stud. He played center and guard, so the Lions can kind of figure out where he fits. They're not 100% sure. Maybe Glasgow slides over, mm-hmm. um, who, who's a good pick. And, they, and they've actually got a pretty good offensive line as well. Lang and Wagner. Right. Uh, you got you got the right side with Rick Wagner, who was PFF's 11th graded uh, right tackle. Uh, you got TJ Lang, who was PFF's 13th. Uh, graded uh, guard, I right. believe. Yep. Um, so th- th- this this unit could really come together. Now you got a center and Glasgow slides over, um, or maybe maybe not. And then they went and picked uh, Terrell Crosby from from Oregon. Here, I don't know a ton about offensive linemen. I'm not pretending like I do, but I know <laughs> I know the name Terrell Crosby from Oregon, who is paving the way for Royce Freeman to do his thing. There you go. Who's kind of a, a little bit more of a versatile piece, um, strong run blocker. So. I, I like what they did there. They short tried to shore up a piece, which they've been trying to shore up for a little while, but sure. they, they brought in free agents who played decent and they had some injuries. And by the way, your best player, Taylor Decker, was hurt most of the season last year. Exactly, so exactly. he comes back in, doesn't play that great, coming off a torn labrum, I think, which is a tough injury to come back from, especially if you're an offensive lineman and that's what you rely on. Right. So you get all these pieces back and now you have a different head coach with maybe a little bit different mindset and maybe we could play with a little bit more balance for once in the life of the Lions. Uh, what you everything you just now said about the lions and carry on johnson and coaching and scheme and hyperbole let me let me just unpack that just a minute because you said a ton and a lot and there was so much good stuff in there and jay wayne said play it safe and that's why he took carry on johnson casey said it in the pre-draft process and one of the first things he said about carry on johnson was he felt like he was good to go anywhere and he didn't need a necessary didn't need a certain scheme to be good and the, both of those, I say it all the time to try to make a to play it safe with your startup picks and don't screw it up. And it needs to be the same exact type of idea with a rookie draft. To an extent, at a Nothing certain point wrong. in the draft, you can start. Well, swinging. yeah, you can yeah. start screwing okay. it up. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can start. You can start taking straight home run cuts. But there, to an extent, well, you you need to play it safe and get somebody solid. So I like that you brought out. We can put all that together. Like you said, you got a new coach coming in. He's coming in with the Patriot way. It may not be Bill Belichick, but it's just like we said with Nagy going to the Bears. You think Nagy's going to go over there to the Bears and not throw and not use a tight end type offense? What what got him where he is and got him a head coach? You think Matt Patricia is going to go? Matt Patricia, when they made that carry on, when they, when they made the offensive lineman pick, they zoomed into the war room. He's got a pencil in his ear, Bo. He's doing what got him there. He's got he's an offense. He's a he's a head coach because of the way he held, handled himself running that defense, working under Belichick for years. He comes over to the Lions. Got his pencil in his ear. Extremely Nothing smart guy. I think he's a rocket, an actual rocket scientist. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. No, no, I believe you. So nothing's changing. So the fact the Patriot way was try to, and it's not, it's not a secret. The Giants said they wanted to do this a while back, and the, and the Lions tried to do it last year with Amir Dula. And it's what everybody needs to be trying to do if you don't have a Leonard Fournette bell cow ram it down your throat. If you can run the ball when the defense thinks you're passing it, and you can pass it when the defense thinks you're running it, which they got the passing part down, right? They can pass it. They can pass it. <laughs> if they can but get balance, if they ha- if with all the passing that they have, with the pass catchers that they have, and the and the stud quarterback that they have, who may not be on people's list as a stud quarterback, same thing I said about Matt Ryan two years ago. Matt Stafford is growing into his arm. He's coming into his mind. He's coming into his mental prime. His arm has been top three in the league for years now but now his head's coming around because he's been in the league for a while and quarterbacks turn good you know most of them get good not in the first couple years you know like everybody like you know Brady wasn't Brady his first couple years he had a good defense good running game anyway I digress so play it safe with the rookie pick you got the running back that's going to stay on the field here when they pass it and run it I I, I love it I really do I love carry on Johnson to the Lions I don't know if I love the one five pick on Carry On Johnson, but I like what well, you said well, there. I'll get back to that in just a second. So bottom end for the Lions here, bottom end 
31st, only Miami was worse in attempts last year. Right. Uh, 21st in touchdowns from the running game. Worst yards per game. Last in yards per attempt. Like, yeah, well, that's what I was saying. It was just they, they, they didn't try it, and they didn't do it exactly. well, and it was it's just... I got off on my tangents like I do when I was talking about Stafford, and I broke thought. This is a guy Stafford, that they can try to do it all for with everything, and balance for out. all the skill that you've seen Stafford show you in the last couple of years and being a good football player. He hasn't had a play action pass. Right. That's what I was trying to say. I got off got off topic. If if you give Stafford a running game with those pass catchers and what he can do, now everything gets better for the offense and harder for the defense going against him. Think, he hasn't been able to pretend like he was handing it to anybody and the defense care. I think they were last in yards behind the line after contact for running backs in that or somewhere along that in the lines were now. Hopefully <laughs> you you're going to well, keep real oh, quick. Hold on, hold on. Hopefully you're going to keep listening before you make some stupid comment on YouTube about how you take carry on Johnson at 5 and how you guys are so dumb because I'm okay with taking the pick at five, but I, I'm 100% with you. I don't think you have to take carry on Johnson at five. Oh, if no you really way. want no carry on Johnson. No need. So I do think this starts a slow dance trade back scenario where you can slowly work your way back <laughs> yeah. and start acquiring assets. I mean, right. well, hold on real quick. Real quick before we get on to this trade talk, I just want to throw one last thing in there. Let's say that the Lions decide not to do any of this hardcore uh I formation running carry on his whole career ran out of the shot. Right. No, you don't need so to. So he be, plays yeah. right into what the Lions have yeah, done in the I, past and he can do I'm well with what they're trying formation. to transition to. I'm so just yeah, I'm just actually executing the run. Right, right. Worse than attempts, worse than average. Right. You know. But he fits in right with in with that shotgun formation sure. that they always Good point. I think so, he, that's what I'm he's versatile. Right. Good point. So back to the trade talk, right? We were in we're in the ultimate dynasty podcast league and it's a super flex league, so the quarterbacks are highly coveted. We had one six. Right. So the numbers we're on the board. Around. Right. We had one six, and, 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 and it's like a couple, a, a couple quarterbacks have gone off the board, and we're sitting there, and we got, we got this, to decide. Pretty much all the, the quarterbacks thing, besides Josh Allen. We got the same thing to decide that I just had to, right? We had carry on on the board, DJ Moore, Rashad Penny, Rashad Penny. No, no well, we were at one six and traded back to one nine, and so then all the quarterbacks back, went off, right? Yeah. So that like, so we, that, we I'm just using thing. that as an example, you. right? We we're sitting there and we're like, man, I could really take carry on right here, but we should probably try and trade back, which we did. We ended up trading back because I'm okay with even even if somebody does take carry on or most likely not taking carry on, I'm right. okay with ending up with Penny. I'm okay with ending up with Rojo. I'm okay with ending up with DJ Moore if I absolutely had to. I'd probably trade back again, but right, all those kind of things. This is a perfect spot to just kind of be slowly working your way back and acquiring assets. Absolutely. Exactly. And you mentioned slow dance. Like, put your hand up on her shoulder at the very top of her shoulder and put your hand up high mid back. Don't even don't get, even don't try even to go get, towards that. Don't even try to lower it down and get some of that nice <laughs> yeah. curve. Don't even get the near the nice small of her back. Don't even get swole. near it. Get up into high back, the middle midriff. school dance, no chest to chest. Eyes straight ahead. Yeah. no. Ch you're not even trying to get up on those boobs. You're, you, you got a foot and a half between you. are taking you. no chance of popping one. No. No chance of little chub. And then you just slow dance it around and do and stay patient. If you got one of those 8, 10-hour, 12-hour, 24-hour pick clocks for your rookie draft, use it. Who can, it's your rookie draft, and you won't have another one until next year. And if you're already in a dynasty league, you're just, your startup's gone, and that was the fun, work and the it's picks. gone. Work the work picks. It. Work the room. See what you can get. See, dance around. Slow dance. It's a slow dance. Anchor one way. Give them something. Work yeah. back the other way. Yeah. Throw out something ridiculous. Don't give them your best offer first. Hell just, no. And don't be upset with somebody being like, oh, this guy gives me bad offer. Like, don't be the bad offer guy. But, like, don't make be it, the make really it, bad Make offer it reasonable guy. so that you see where I'm going. Right. And, and if then, you ever, ever send Cindy. back a trade calculator, <laughs> leave the league because you're a jackass. <laughs> I don't care what the trade calculator says. And if you're playing Dynasty Fantasy Football and can't figure out where you value people for yourself, I don't want to play with you. I don't want to be in a league with you. And don't ever send that to me. Don't I send love it to anybody. It Casey's in trade negotiations and the last thing said is a trade calculator. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> <sighs> oh, that's funny. Figure it out, Bo. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Well, but the, so for me, I mean, one one through four is is definitely a tier, and maybe there's some tiers within there. But then five through you know eight or nine is like another tier, and if you can trade out of the top five, if you well, can trade yeah. out of five and move back to eight or nine, and, and pick up especially pick up something down the road, you get somebody who's a Royce Freeman guy. You add another guy to that mix. Exactly. And, right. Well, you just said a guy. Here's the thing. 
It won five if it goes the way we just said, and it probably won't because there's a Rashad Penny guy in every room, maybe four of them, okay? There's a Ronald Jones guy in every room, maybe two or three of them. There's a DJ Moore guy in every room, maybe two of them. There's going to be a Royce Freeman guy that's going to be chomping at the bit to take him after those guys fall off. And there might be a Carryon Johnson guy in every room too. He's not getting the love that some of these other guys are getting. We're going to talk about the real real fat good stuff about the, the Rashad Penny stuff because he's he's up next. So I've blown it again. I blew it again. Yeah. But you got. Are we just going to go ahead and just transition into the Rashad Penny? I like it. Commission is telling us to make a pick. <laughs> Let's go ahead and transfer <laughs> this over to the one six, and we'll keep the conversation going and bring the and bring Rashad Penny into it. Let's do it. All right. Well, I'm going to send my secretary up there with the card with the, my pick on it. But everyone already knows what it is because Big Co blew it. <laughs> I did blow it. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself with the six pick and married to the games 2018 rookie. Don't fuck it up, mock. Who do you got, Casey? You just fucked it up because it's don't mock it up before you fuck it up. Yeah, well, it's you can say it either way. <laughs> <laughs> I selected uh, Penny. Rashad. Rashad Penny, San Diego State, with this pick. Boo. Um, Boo. Oh, wait, that's for the commissioner. Not, not <laughs> the, t- the team that I was selecting for has Le'Veon Bell and Devonta Freeman and DeAndre Hopkins are basically the highlights of this squad here yeah, he's got a couple of studs a couple, jimmy couple jimmy of studs G. and then the rest of the team is is kind of poor pretty poor probably could have gotten away with taking dj Moore here but this, I, i'm sticking with my running back guys this roster would get you at the one 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 two draft pick but there's a couple of there's deandre hopkins and Le'Veon bell Devontae freeman and that's you get that's enough to win ball games right there right that's and how it works this, this is how he's gone about his entire career in this league <laughs> right just two or three really good guys. The rest we traded away Zeke the year he, right. we were talking about him earlier. Zeke and Le'Veon got him to all the way to the championship. Got him. Got it, traded for Nuke and, and uh, Freeman, Freeman, which turns out to be a really decent trade too. I mean, that's yeah. One of the, he's got some studs. Diversified on the team. a little, but could Hop. have just held on to Zeke. He just went to the championship exactly and won. Anyway, I took Rashad Penny here. Anyway, we were debating the the fifth pick here. What who you would take pre draft? I had Carry On Rojo penny okay yep um so now that this is over and and at first you you see the draft pick go to the seahawks i don't like the pick i don't like what they did they were saying how they were thinking about taking him at 18 and they found a trade partner trade back now it isn't always easy to just find a trade partner and trade back as we all like to talk about or whatever but like you could i maybe the patriots were going to take rashad penny yeah maybe doesn't really fit the same kind of mold as sony michelle took and kind of in my opinion, what the what they're trying to do up there, um, and I just think you could have traded back. I have no problem with you taking the running back, but I just don't see. That's why my jaw dropped. I mean, right. I don't. I just couldn't see how anybody took a running back. Obviously, Darius Geis was sliding, and we didn't know how far he was sliding at the time. He wasn't sliding before that pick because when Rashad Penny goes off, we're in the you know there's no other running back besides Geis. Right. So Saquon off. Geis's slide wasn't even happening yet. We when the running back gets taken. And he says Rashad Penny. I'm like, oh my God, Darius Geis is on the board. Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle's on the board. How are the the Seahawks taking Rashad Penny? That is that is must be that is their guy, right? No, and and I'm I'm not gonna really let that just take over everything and make my decision and be like, oh well, they, they drafted him in the first round. It's their guy, you know. That's, oh, that, that's, had, a, that's over everything. Yeah, teams you know? have had their guys before that weren't draft any good capital. in many, many positions. And I'm fine with the draft capital, and, and, and it, it definitely does, does. It means something. Means something, and it definitely slides my pick a little bit. And again, I, if I'm in five, I'm probably trading back, and if I'm at six, I, I might trade back as well because I don't mind having Rojo or Carry On or Penny or DJ Moore, whoever kind of falls to me, or or even Royce if I got deals are hot and heavy and good. <laughs> um. But what? so then what I started kind of put, I didn't, didn't love the pick because of the player. And I thought you could have slid back a little bit to get him. And then for the Seahawks, right for the Seahawks. Right. And then you, you're like, Oh, your first initial reaction is always oh, the Seahawks offensive line is atrocious. They can't run the ball. It's terrible over there. Well, guess what we're about to do. Dig in. We're going to talk about some more coaching changes and what's going on over there. So, if this is if you're not into the coaching changes and all that hyperbole and all that kind of stuff, this isn't the podcast for you, and you're probably <laughs> never listening again. You're probably already tuned out. Right. Actually, if you would just tune in, we'd make you a lot better fantasy football player. Right. 
So they obviously go through some changes in the offseason. Daryl Bevel's finally out of there. I hate Daryl Bevel. He's out of there. Didn't enjoy his play calling. I'm a 49ers fan, first and foremost. But I don't let my fanhood get in the way too much of this stuff here. <laughs> I, I, at least a try. I mean, you did just take a Seahawk. I did. So you bring in Brian Schottenheimer, who, I, you know, I don't know a ton about Brian Schottenheimer. So I start doing a little bit of research about what his game is because it's crazy that these coaches come in here and they actually have like a system and what they've done in the past and what, what, what they History. go with and how they do it. Um, <laughs> so Wait, what? What they go with. Obviously, this is the it. son of, of, uh, of a coaching legend in, in Schottenheimer. Mm -hmm. We got Mr. Marty. Marty Schottenheimer here. So Brian's here. His background's in the Air Coriel offense, which is kind of vertical routes. Uh, with a power run game so what it you know you're going through here and you're, you're talking about the the offensive line for these guys for, for the Seahawks they picked up Dwayne Brown late in the season which was a great pickup for them obviously the hoss of that line right now sure great maybe, pickup for them you know maybe the line's not quite as bad as you as you thought it was they have some okay pieces there but it's not it's not it's not excellent but what, what what's going on here is is you want to take a coach and you, you made a change and and you Pete Carroll's out there and he's talked a million times about how they need to get back to what they were doing when they were winning football games and doing it the way that Pete Carroll wants to do it, playing defense, running the ball, chomping gum and letting and letting <laughs> Russell Wilson create when he needs to create, not just having to create to survive. Pounding the rock. Right. So Brian Schottheimer, Air Coriel offense, all this. Offensive line isn't great, but you know, yeah, it's maybe yeah. it's just, could be slightly better than we thought it was um, coming into this season. So then in the fourth round, they draft Will Dissey, 6'4", 262, converted D tackle, uh, just learning the position, not a crazy athlete, but can make some plays. What position is he playing now? He's gonna he's playing tight end, and okay. he's more of a blocking tight end. So and they draft you, a blocking tight end. You do the research on him and start reading. You just read how much he helped the Washington Huskies run game, and we all know that was a pretty prolific run game. Miles Gaskin's a freak, and they had some other good <laughs> running backs Super there. Super freak. And I like I like what they're doing. So they so they picked up a tight end here. Off season they pick up uh, Ed Dixon, who mostly known as a blocking Solid tight end. And obvi obviously Olsen went down last year, and they uh, and he and Dixon, some passes. Dixon he had emerged. that one game. Dixon emerged being a, a half decent because I, I I had bricks for hands and my you know I always that's how I always envisioned it. <laughs> He'd get wide open and it just hit him in the face mask. Yeah, uh, had, had some decent games last year. Um. So what I start to kind of put together in my head is, is you're talking about this Air Coriel offense, power vertical scheme. You got some tight ends now who can run you in a big set. Right. Which pretty much all of Rashad Penny's runs at South Dakota, not South Dakota, San Diego State were not out of a shotgun like they were currently running over in Seattle out of more of a big set out of okay, the single the dots. out of the single back. Okay. So, you know, they're maybe just starting to gear towards, hey, I, we're, we picked up this guy. We want this guy because he runs out of these sets. We're going to – obviously, we just drafted him pretty high. They want him to be the three-down workhorse. Got a couple of blocking tight ends. Got a couple of blocking tight ends. Maybe going to, you know, get a little heavier on the on the line. A lot of people kind of going a little bit more towards this 12 or 21 package where you got two tight ends out on the field. You can slot one and right. do various things, create mismatches, all that kind of stuff. But you can also control the run game. Mm-hmm which is what the Seahawks want to do. Um, I like all that. Put Connect those dots for us so like that's, that. That's kind of basically where I'm at. When I started initially in this, I was like, I don't love the landing spot for Penny. I already didn't love Penny as much as other people love Penny, but started to kind of all, all those kind of things. Now maybe, you know, I've made sense of it in my head and put those dots together and maybe somebody completely disagrees with me because that's maybe they're not really going to be what they're doing. But Brian Schottenheimer is a guy who he's had plenty of backs with 290 plus carries in his career. Uh, usually most, most years uh, when he was an offensive coordinator, he was in the upper half of rushing attempts for his running backs. Uh, so a guy who, Wants to run the ball. He never really had a good quarterback at any spot that he landed in. He played with Favre for a year in New York, but they pretty much scrapped their whole offense to let Favre do what Favre was going to do right, right. for a year over there. He was the, the um, Rams offensive coordinator, but Bradford missed like 25 straight games when he was there. So you have uh, a bunch of nobodies playing quarterback over there. And then for uh, the Jets, 
outside of Favre, it was Sanchez, and they had an end of a Pennington, and just sure. not great quarterbacks. Sure. Uh, so, so there's a guy who has a, a history of running the ball a decent amount, yeah. taking shots down the field, and I like what they did and what they brought in, and and maybe the the line isn't as bad. Like I said, you got well, you got was... Dwayne Brown was a strong acquisition. You got Ethan Posick or Pocket, I'm not sure. Didn't grade out so well. 76 out of 77 graded players at his position. But a little bit better at run blocking. Justin Britt was a second-round pick last year. Actually graded out as the 17th uh, best pass blocker. A little worse in the run game. So not terrible there out of there. They picked up DJ Fluker, 17th in the run blocking uh, grade out. Um, and then Effetti is probably... The most that that right tackle is the most up in the air spot for this for this team. So it's, it's not it's a bad offensive line, but it's maybe not the worst offensive line. And maybe you can get in this big package and give Russell a little bit more time and some more options of pounding the rock and doing, you know, what Penny possibly could do. Now I like the I still like Carry On Johnson as a player, and I think I still like Rojo as a player more than Rashad Penny. But all those things kind of connecting the dots for me. I like. The way he ran the ball in college, and it seems like they're they're kind of lining up to run the ball, maybe similar, of trying to make it work for the guy they just invested a lot of money in. Oh yeah, which is a lot of teams don't do that, and we've seen the Seahawks win with this method before. When Marshawn Lynch was in town, good luck stopping these guys. Now I don't think Rashad Penny's anywhere near the, mm -mm. the power game running that Marshawn Lynch is. <laughs> no way. But he can catch half decent and he true. They, they got a lot invested in him and he can be a three down guy so i'm 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 taking penny with this pick and i'm not upset about it well can i just say how impressed i am that you were able to do that whole thing right there without bugging out because big co just pushed his chair back is <laughs> over here doing these back stretches and i'm oh, trying God. not to bug out lower back issues though <laughs> i'm standing up right now i'm standing One, up if, if we keep this thing together long enough this this podcast will end up on video i promise you and that would have been hilarious if you just seen here watching <laughs> anyway i uh completely disagree with everything you said about <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no i mean I, I i get it man i get it and and and, the, and he's got name cache alone i mean everybody loves this guy everybody loves this guy and you can throw the the pff stat in anyone's face like i know the yards after contact look tremendous and and I'm all for a good stat, um, but but not if it contradicts like what I saw on the field. Really. Yeah, but your eyeball test is never good. And I know, yeah. and and I know, like you just said that you like Carry On and, and Rojo maybe more as players, but you're going you're going with the situation and, and and everything you just said, and I completely understand that, and I really can't argue too hard against that. But over here in in my camp, like if I like the other dudes as players better, and this is Dynasty. And, and it's not that I, it's not that I just like these other players better. It's almost that I don't like Penny a whole lot, and I'm, I'm about to take some heat for this. But oh, I just, you're gonna take some heat. I just, I just like I get it. he's big and fast, and he can run through weak Mountain West arm tackles. Like okay, but there's also a ton of weak tackles that brings this dude down behind the line of scrimmage. There it is. The heat's but, coming. Heat's coming. So you just never see this dude maul or beast a guy. Like I went back and rewatched oh, games. Oh well, there's like, a couple of clips where he knocks somebody over and runs twenty more yards. Yeah, <laughs> there's also I, a I'm ton of you. clips I, where, I, they, where on, there's a weak little the guy got a finger on his arm pad and and he ran for eighty more yards and that boosted that yards after contact. I'm but, on I'm the, on record of being right there with you and I, I don't disagree with you. I just happened to I started I did started digging and doing came to all this stuff and connected some dots and I. I don't hate the situation. They got a, a decent amount invested in him, and they're going to give him a, a ton of shots to do what he does. And he's, it's not like he's not talented. He right. is. He is, he is talented, exactly. and when he gets ahead of steam, and and, and he's pretty shifty. When once he once he gets going, it's it's really tough for it to bring him down. And I and I get that. But like this San Diego State offensive line just crushed. They did. Like they were crushing. The fullback was crushing. Everybody was crushing. The five eight, one hundred seventy six pound Donnell sure. Pumphrey crushed. Right. A year Absolutely ago. did yeah. similar things to what. But Rashad what you, Penny but what just, you just said, Jay Wayne, was there the guy would get a hand on his shoulder pad and then he would break that out and run for eighty yards a couple times. So when somebody runs for a couple eighty yard I runs in college, they're flashy. I get it. And so somebody there's there's flashy, there's some there's some yards after contact stats that make that drive him up in some people's list. So there's Rashad Penny. There's the production there and was, the there was, PFF stats and everybody was, just took that and ran with it. There was somebody that was all over some Rashad including Penny the Seahawks. Before the Seahawks made their play. And that's 
that's the biggest thing here is what Casey was saying. Part of Casey's foundation of his of his of his stuff there that he was putting together was the offensive line and how bad it was. And we and that's come up on here a couple times about different in the last couple of years. And you know, not many people had as bad of an offensive line as the Seahawks last year, as like the Bengals and the and the and the Giants. It was just atrocious. But now they're in for a, a new season. Reboot the offensive right. line. You can get Dwayne Brown you for get, the whole season. Right. You Dwayne, get Fluker, who isn't a terrible run blocker. Your so, center's kind of coming around. Well, just like the Vikings. Possibly. Two years ago, the Vikings had the worst offensive line in the league. And last year, you didn't hear a lot of bad stuff about them. Things happen. You know, you bring in a good guy. You get a cornerstone. And you reboot. You bring some guys in. And, and you get some new stuff going on. And all of a sudden, your offensive line ain't the worst in the league anymore. And... Uh, on top of all that, you still have Russell Wilson, who is well, that's a fantastic creator and exactly. is very strenuous on a defense. There's, he was doing it all last year, and right. this will help hopefully maybe bring balance back to them, just like we were talking about with the Lions. Like, but I, I, don't get me wrong, like I'm all like I'm okay with trading these picks, just like we talked about at five and six. Like, I don't care which of these guys I really end up with. If I don't have Penny in a lot of places, I want some Penny. If I don't have carry on Johnson in a lot of places. I want some carry on Johnson. If I don't have a Rojo, I might I might trade back and try to get some Rojo. You There's know, nothing wrong with some diversity because I don't of, mind trading in these areas here. Right, right. To, and I don't care which one I end up with, but I was just I'm making a case for this guy and he's probably jumped Rojo for me at this point in time. I think he should. But and but see in that the I don't reason think I can do it. One of the reasons I blew this name on the pick here before when I called it out, called his name out before we were ready to actually call the one six pick is because his name was coming up so often. I believe in a lot of drafts he's probably going to be gone before the one five. I, I I think with the Seahawks made their play, they come up and take this guy over Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle and even Darius Geis and you know before anybody else after Saquon Barkley, like you said, Russell Wilson he helps the running backs get holes. Like I and I may, maybe it was Mayock. The funniest thing he said all night was the uh, super freak. W- well, other than that, <laughs> <laughs> that the the game plan for the Seahawks was for them to call hike right, and call for Russell hike, Wilson hike. to run for his life. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. they they definitely have had tough luck with running backs over there for the last two seasons with injuries and ineffectiveness, and then they let Alex Collins go for some reason. Yeah, I was going to say they didn't need to draft for Rashad in the first round. They could have just picked up Alex Collins off the waiver. Oh wait, but they, they were the ones that yep, cut. You don't Alex know Collins. what you don't know, and all of a sudden Alex Collins is good somewhere else. So anyway, Russell Wilson can run some boot action now and have a threat when he hands it off to somebody. If Rashad Penny is good. He could be really good with Russell Wilson as his quarterback. And that draft capital is through the roof with Rashad Penny right now. And the person that liked Rashad Penny, the two or three people that were going to like him, even if he was the third or fourth or fifth running back off the board, now they love him. Sure. So that's what I meant when I talked about Darius Geis. If you weren't sure what to do at 1-2 one, or 1-3, one, 1-4, one, and you like okay with any of those guys, if you trade back a couple picks in the draft and the two or three guys that you really wanted – only one or two of them even goes because now all of a sudden some other people like the you know the penny stock is out there you know and so there's gonna be some one two one three Rashad Penny getting drafted all day long and so you're that rookie running backs those rookie running backs in the in the rookie draft that you're about to go through is it could be all over the board so don't be surprised if the guy if you're sitting at one three and you're like I wish I want to trade up for Darius guys give it a chance maybe it's Rashad Penny and if not you'll be okay you know right uh, yeah I'm sure I, I I yes maybe Penny goes two or three he could. I'm just saying sure. I, it's, there's people out there pounding Definitely. the table for him oh, right absolutely. now right behind and, and it, and it, could only, it could only grow you know as as things move forward I, I think he's around the, the fifth pick for the most part but I don't disagree with you at all I see plenty of people who have him as the two as the number two running back. Well, they've already come out and draft. said this guy's going to be. I mean, obviously, they made their move in the first round right. over all these other they want guys. Him to but be they, their guy. They're talking three him up. Don't come three down field. back. This is our guy. We're going to plug it. We're going to. He's going to get better at pass protection if he's going to stay on the field. For, that's they're for gonna, sure. They're going to pound the rock with this guy. Now, whether the well, rock gets pounded is another thing to, to be I, determined, but he's going to get love, the opportunity. He doesn't love really the way pound it's set it. up for him, man. I just love. After I did some digging, I know I said all that stuff and I was trying to get it all out, but it's just. I just love the way that all this set up for him they they brought in Dixon and then they drafted another kind of blocking can can move tight end out there who's just started playing tight end recently he switched to from D tackle to tight end so hasn't quite developed into being a full on like tight ends take a while to develop just anyway. in general and now you get a guy but he but a, a former run D blocker and you got a guy you went out hits. and got another good run blocker and you can set up these bigger packages that 
Penny is familiar with coming out and, and running out of, and maybe you can get out of the shotgun a little bit. And it's just, I think that can really help your guy out here, bringing him into a familiar scenario rather than trying to switch up everything he ever knew. It's already going to be a whole new world coming up here sure. from the NFL to San Diego State. So for sure. That's and, and I don't think, I think the line is, could, is, is probably going to be a little more improved than people think. They didn't. They didn't do much to to improve the line. No, no, they didn't. But Dwayne Brown didn't play till late, and I just said that the center yeah. played pretty decent. He was a second year player last year, I believe. I got you. And they brought in Fluker, who's not the worst. He can he can run block a little. They they got some they got some issues, but it could yeah. be a little better. And you, you bring in a bigger set, and, and, uh, and that would be the last thing to my point is you brought it up. This is the pass protection, like carry on what he is. That's what part. Of, that's a strong part of his game. That's not a strong part of of Rashad Penny's game. And like they need. Of running back to pass protect there, and maybe the tide's changing. But I could see. I think there's some risk here. I think this guy could. I mean, this guy could plummet. You know. Whereas like the more all every single one of these guys has risks though, and you I you just got a guy who you know maybe I don't love him as much as the next guy, but I mean I'm certainly wrong on evaluations all the time. And he's just Sometimes. what you want is as a guy who is pretty athletic and. Pretty decent. He's talented, and he can catch a ball. I'll give him that. He'll and he's going to get plenty of opportunity, and and he's got the draft capital invested in him, and all uh, everything just lines up for him to get a heavy workload and to be tried out for at least a couple of years here. Like sure. it's just not going to be a, a one and done unless something crazy happens. Yeah, and we called like that. CJ Proces comes back, and he's the best back in the league. I mean, right. My jaw's hanging down for 10 minutes after the pick, still trying to figure it out. I'm looking at Casey trying to say, I mean, it, we were 10 picks later, and I'm I'm still set. I just said, so Rashad Penny, huh? And I'm just trying to figure it out. And then we just, and then we just call that Pacific Coast connection. You know, it's like yeah. maybe they're just more familiar with him because they got that Pacific Northwest thing going on, and he's in their time slot, and they get to see a lot more of him than the Georgia backs. I don't know. But the Seahawks are all in on this guy, and I believe that it's it's worth us. I mean, his, this is a this is the opportunity is safe, and the home run cut is there too because if it hits, it's going to hit big. I like it because I hate the Seahawks, and now I don't really like Rashad Penny coming in here just because I don't really love the guy and didn't love the evaluation doesn't mean that I can't draft the guy. But now I get to really hate this guy, <laughs> the truth and I can out. really hope that he sucks. <laughs> Well, you'll take him here at six. And, and I, I will, and I'm not going to be that upset about it. Yeah, I think it's a it's a good opportunity with a good a decent franchise here with a decent defense and a really good quarterback. And, yeah, and, a, head, and a head coach that wins. I'd be willing to say eighty to ninety percent of rookie drafts he's gone by five or earlier. I, the hype is real. Probably agree with that. All right. Well, I think that'll wrap it up. That's six picks for you. The first half of the first round. We're going to go ahead and call this a wrap. Thanks for listening, everyone. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co, at Jay Wayne's World. If you're on iTunes, please go down and hit that five star review. You can you can write one if you'd like, but just just hit those five. You don't stars. even have to anymore. It really helps us out. We're also on every other platform of your choice: Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, YouTube. Go hit subscribe there. It really helps us out. Please and thank you. Thanks for listening, everyone. Till next time. This has been Married to the Game.